Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Today we are watching a Judy D Worst Reviewed Makeup video. These are incredible. I don't know what to say. You have to go and check it out. I will link the full video down below as we're kind of cutting through this video and looking at some key points. Just before we get into that day, if it's your first time, hi, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube. Also in real life, it's my goal to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup. And as I always like to say in these reaction videos, creativity and individual Individuality have no rules, but makeup has a theory, especially when you are charging people for it. So <laughs> let's take a look. For those of you who aren't familiar with Judy D, she does an array of videos, but probably her most popular are the worst review makeup artists. She goes to a salon that has pretty m bad reviews and has her makeup done, and we kind of take a look at it and. Um, <laughs> she shows us the final result and that is what we are watching today like i said go and check out our channel subscribe and wait for these videos and just you can just work your way through them all because they are incredible okay let's go what i wanted for this makeup but one thing i was sure i didn't want was lashes her face. Listen, one thing the makeup artists need to always remember is you are not you are, you are not to do things that the, the client doesn't want you to do. You're being paid to give them what they want. Unless it's terrible, of course you can advise, like, I would do this, I would do this. If they still say no, they say no. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, a shoe box on the floor is not a good makeup kit. A box, fine. But before your client comes in, there's a table there. Have it all out, ready to go. Tissue down for hygiene. Have it displayed, like, welcome to my station. Imagine getting your makeup done at some place and you walk in and they get a shoe box from the floor. I mean, fine, shoe box, but like, don't get it off the floor. For hygiene reasons. I mean, I honestly can't tell if he didn't hear me or if he just really wanted to put those lashes on me. <laughs> like, I don't Look how dirty the end of that pump is. Listen. When you're working on other people, right, fine, pump it on yourself, do whatever. But when you're working on clients and other people, you need to be hygienic. If I go to a makeup artist, right, and I get some kind of infection on my skin, I'm suing you. No, I'm not. But you're going to get a bad review. And you're going <laughs> to... And it will be because you gave me an infection. You know, I have nothing on my cheeks, I just realised. And look as well, like, all the dots on her face, you can literally... Here's, okay, here's what you should be doing as a makeup artist, and pretty much on yourself, let's be real. Even a few pumps on the back of your hand onto a palette, and then start your way and do it gradually, gradually. This is gonna be, well, one, it's the wrong shade, but I mean, it didn't seem like there was much choice anyway, but uh, this is gonna be a lot. All of that on the forehead could be the whole face, 100%. <laughs> Mainly because we now look anemic. Or I look like I've uh, stayed in the tan bed for a bit too long. I'm sorry, that, that is, it's obviously wrong straight up, straight away. Here's the deal. Fine, use a darker foundation, but use it on the outside of her face and maybe get the, the product that is her skin tone or something lighter in the middle. Then at least we're creating some kind of depth and, and you know, some kind of like something to it. The sponge is also filthy. The sponge is disgusting. Sponges are like homes for, you know what it reminds me of? You know when you see like coral, right? In the sea and fish swim in? It reminds me of that, but like for bacteria. <laughs> I don't care, okay? I don't care about my foundation anymore. At least not the shade. What I care about is that sponge. <clears throat> Yuck. Disgusting. Disgusting. One does, the foundation I can wipe. The foundation, we can wipe her. The sponge and its bacteria, we can't wipe that bacteria. That bacteria is on my skin, you know? But anyway, who cares about the foundation? The foundation is the least of our problems compared to the beautiful art, the Picasso art this man did with the contour on my face. Wow. <laughs> what is this? It was wasted. It was wasted. That's, that's... Uh, 
Uh, wait, let's go back. Let's go back a tiny, tiny little bit there. Here. So, <laughs> that cheekbone, <laughs> that cheekbone is dipping down like this. Like, fine, have a nice swoop, but that's dipping down. So you mean, you're telling me you want her cheekbones to do this. <laughs> That's what, that's where that contour is going. Especially when you're drawing it on like this. He's either going to have to blend that out completely or <laughs> and just get rid of it. But also these bits, these like jowly bits, it's aging. It's aging. Contour is starting to borderline on theatrical special effects. It, it was wasted. That's, that's where my heart broke. Like it literally didn't last a second before he blended it and it was gone. Like there was no point because that foundation, boy, the foundation ate, ate that contour. I was knocked out for sure. <laughs> Look, look, look where the darkness is and where the contour is. What is going on? This is why you can't just draw on your face and expect it to look good. Not everyone has the same facial structures. So you can't just draw... Oh no. You can't just draw the same pattern on people's face and expect it to, to look incredible. And also blending in contour with a sponge might be fine if you're doing it in a big kind of area, but I feel like for precision down the nose and places like that, a brush is nicer just so you can be more precise. Going straight over to the eyes without a disposable. In there, you can buy disposable lip ones that have a similar um, top to a concealer. Hygiene, hygiene. You know, when I watch these videos, it's not even the bad makeup that annoys me as much as the hygiene. You know, the hygiene is so important. Why are we highlighting under the brow of a darker shade, a darker yellow? Why? Why, how highlight is brighter. It needs to be brighter. Sorry, and also we're dipping that foundation stick into the foundation on directly onto her face and back in. And then we're probably gonna do the same on someone else. Hygiene. So he licked his makeup brush and then put it on her eyes. That is disgust. That is disgusting. That is absolutely disgusting. Do it on yourself. Fine, whatever. But if you need your brush to be wet, a bit of water, a bit of hydrating mist, and put it in your mouth and then touch it to someone's eyeball. Infections. Okay, Londas, I don't care anymore how I look. It's how I feel that matters at this point. That brush touched my face and it was moist, Londas. This was supposed to be an eyeshadow. So now ask me, why is it moist? Why is it moist, Judy? Because man's sucked on the brush. He's. That is, I, that is foul. Like, I can't believe somebody would do that and then think it's okay. Like, where in your mind is that okay? You know what I mean? Also, eyeshadows don't need to be wet if they are, especially matte ones, if you're using a good eyeshadow base, that's what an eyeshadow primer is there for, to grip onto that powder and make sure that it sticks and you're using a correct brush. That brush looks fine, a flat brush, but he's really using the tip like this, like his, where's a brush? I've got a million, why can't I see one? His, his like using the tip like this for some reason, where if you just get an eyeshadow and pack it on like this, and then blend, you have much more of a, a, a better color payoff. I cannot believe he's licking the brush and touching and then pointing it to someone's face. Dis absolutely disgusting. He sucked on the brush, he blew on the brush. I share all sorts of DNA with this man right now through eyeshadow. It's a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for sure. <laughs> and I hope it stays that way. <laughs> I mean, he was like wiping the excess of the shadow on my towel, but then he was still licking it with the shadow on the brush. So like, I'm sure he ingested like a good ton of eyeshadow. <laughs> 
This shape here where we stopped the eyeshadow dead straight on the lid like that is, isn't like the best thing to do. I would have perhaps angled that green a little bit more simply by twisting the brush this way and, and tapping on this way or this way. Um, just because it, it blends nicer, you don't have to, if you want the blend, you don't have to make a solid shape like that. You can literally leave it rough and then blend in that yellow in, into it and, and make it nice and soft. It doesn't have to be edges and edges and edges, especially like this, oh, you can just see where it's been wet and he just taps it on and it hasn't moved because it's just, oh my God, I'm having, <laughs> the windows are being cleaned and the brushes are just getting the shit out of me. Oh my God, I need to decided to add glitter and I guess he didn't like the extra crunch. <laughs> he didn't like the crunch of the glitter so he stopped sucking on the brush which is a relief for my and his health. <laughs> but I did learn my lesson from this makeup artist. Apart from telling people not to touch my eyebrows I also added not to add glitter ever because my god Lindas this was painful. It was very painful because he was so rough with my eyes and glitter is already acting as an exfoliator so my eyes, they were being exfoliated. And when you put like a base down for a glitter, like a glitter glue, or just something a little bit tackier, you definitely have more of um, a, a gentle time with it. Whereas that looks, that looks insanely chunky. And he's stopping it there dead straight again. How much nicer would that green be if we just angled it slightly? It's exhaling, and so there was no oxygen. Like it was just carbon dioxide. <laughs> So I, I don't, I don't get again why people think it's okay to rest a towel on somebody and then brush the brushes on their body. It's on their body on the towel. Have a towel to one side. Also, I have from my Kiko the black towel that you just lay down, put all your products on for hygiene reasons. Brush it off there, you know. <laughs> So these are the brushes he was using for all the other eye makeup as well, which is fine. But you know, you can get like fast drying brush cleaner. Use a little bit of that because now the front of her brows are green. He was actually doing an okay-ish job until he blocked off the front of a brow. Hey, you know how I feel about that. I can't stand that. Clean your brushes or use a pencil, sharpen a pencil, you know? Wait, 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 one second, one sec, one, one whole second. What, so when he was using that lipstick, was that the same brush he used for another eyeshadow? Because there was powder going onto that lipstick. <laughs> I'm so confused. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is so horrible. We know that concealer is too yellow and too dark, but also as well, you don't need that much. Look, the whole thing says full coverage on it. The tiniest bit on your angle brush to shape up a lip. Way too much, just calm down. You know what? I can forgive this makeup artist. I can forgive this makeup artist for the lashes, for the licking, for the glitter, for the lack of oxygen. I can forgive him for leaving my face in a shocked state. 
and finally for these atrocious lips and giving me a mustache. We, I can forgive him for all these things. It's okay. I can. I just don't know if I have it in me to forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I can't even leave the shading he did because that that's got. I felt vandalized. It's uh, definitely interesting, you know, and we love... We Why are you pushing back the middle of her throat? <laughs> like, push back here, sure, push back here, but ideally you want the middle to be lighter and, like, if anything, like, a bit glowier, you know? it's It would slim down the neck if that's what we're trying to do. It will slim down the neck and, and jaw if you contour here and here. I've really swollen glands, by the way. I'm, really, I'm not very well. Um, that's why I'm ex extra puffy. Um, but it, it, you slim here, slim here. Like you do with legs, right? You slim down the edges and then you lighten the middle to make them look longer and slimmer. I mean, just look at all those different shades of green around her face where the green's been like covered <laughs> with foundation, glitter everywhere. This is, this, the lesson from this video, I think is precision. You need to be so much more precise with your tools, with your colors, with where you're placing product. <laughs> These colors work really beautifully together, so it would have been really nice to see, you know, it blended properly and, and um, yeah. The, the whole look, it looks like she's done a really patchy fake tan. Like it doesn't, it's obviously not her skin tone. The lip here is fine, but around the edges, it's obviously a completely different tone from the rest of her skin. There's many things going on on the, on the face and every part looks separate. It's, it looks patchy and strange. I, I, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really, I don't even know what else to say. That was so stressful. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like I said, go and check out the whole video down below because there are some things that happen in that video that are just unexcusable, inexcusable. You know what I'm trying to say. If you haven't already, go and subscribe to Judy because the videos are absolutely incredible, very well edited, very well put together. And she just has this amazing, unique style in her videos. So check her out. Do consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you so, so much for being here. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye.